So the Dunker view of X-ray is done for which joint? We have the various joints around the shoulder. If we are given an X-ray image, we should know how to identify these various joints. So this is the humerus. This is the glenoid. So this becomes the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint. This process of the scapula is the acromion process and it articulates with clavicle. So this becomes the acromioclavicular joint and this process of the scapula is the coracoid process. So if we correlate that's the scapula, the glenoid, humerus, so that's the shoulder joint. This is the acromion process articulating with clavicle and that's the coracoid process. So the Zanka view is done for this joint that is the acromioclavicular joint. How do we remember that? The mnemonic is in the name Zanka itself. So it is the joint between A and C that is acromioclavicular joint. So how do we take this x-ray is? The x-ray beam is angle cephalid at a degree of 10 and it is centered on the acromioclavicular joint and basically it's an anteroposterior that is an AP view. So remember the Zanka view, mnemonic ANC acromioclavicular joint. So in this question, we have to identify the investigation and the sheeted part. So first of all, this is a MRI of the brain because the bone cortex here is black. So to identify a CT or MR, always look at the bone cortex. If the bone cortex is white, it's a CT scan. If it is black, it's an MRI like in this image. So option D is automatically ruled out because it says it's a CT scan which is incorrect. Next we have to identify whether it's a corded nucleus, globus or vitamin. So basically which basal ganglia is it? So let us have a look at the basal ganglia. In the basal ganglia, the part which surrounds this frontal horn of the lateral ventricle, it becomes the corded nucleus head. Rest of the basal ganglia is the lentiform nucleus, the medial part of which is the globus and the lateral part is the putamen. So again, the medial part globus pallidus and the lateral part putamen, these together form the lentiform nucleus. So let us see this in this MRI. So this part becomes the caudate nucleus, this medial part becomes the globus pallidus and the shaded lateral part becomes the putamen. Therefore, the correct answer is option C, that is it's an MRI showing putamen. So here we have an image and the classical appearance. We see that this is a vertebra and we see a smaller vertebra within it. So we have a small vertebra and a larger vertebra. So this is the bone within bone appearance which is seen in osteopetrosis. Osteopetrosis, the term itself means osteo means bone and petros means stone. So the bones in osteopetrosis are like stones, that is they are scleros because Osteoclasts are defective in osteopetrosis. This is the MCQ asked. In osteopetrosis, it is dysfunction of osteoclast and not osteoblast. That is why the bones are sclerosed. So this image shows all the features of osteopetrosis. We see that there is widening of the diploic space, especially the skull base which leads to compression of the cranial nerves and hence symptoms like visual complaints and deafness. In the vertebra, you see the sandwich appearance that is the anterior sclerosis that is sandwich sign of osteopetrosis again the sandwich sign. The bones are dense diffuse osteosclerosis. The medullary cavity is also involved that is why there is anemia thrombocytopenia and there is extra medullary hematopoiesis leading to hepatosplenomegaly and we see bone within bone appearance here and there is metaphyseal flaring that is called Erlenmeyer flask deformity seen in femur. So these are the features of osteopetrosis which is also called Albers-Schonberg disease 
और मार्बल बोन डिजीज